Well, I'm finally back with it again, YouTube. Okay, this is a very weird start, but hi, I'm your no-brained ice cream, or you can just call me Noor. I really enjoy analyzing murder drone characters, and I really hope you like this video just as much as the end character analysis I made last time. Today's character analysis is going to be about Tessa James Elliot. Now let's head on to the video. Understanding characters are very important. Knowing how they will or have transformed shows the viewer a clear understanding on what they had to go through to reach this outcome. I usually list the reasons on how much murder drone characters are severely changing by the minute, and I'll always appreciate the characters a whole ton. However, there's one character who I genuinely appreciated, but has reached my full decision onto being the most wasted throughout the series, and that is Tessa. It's weird for me to say that, right? Especially the people who watch my channel know how much I understand how well they're written. I of course respect Liam Vickers' decisions on how he wants to handle characters, but this is just from my personal opinion. If we really want to understand Tessa, not just as a character, but as a person, I think my analysis will make a lot more sense to you. To first understand Tessa, let me do a short but brief overview about her and the episodes with her. Tessa. She was the daughter of James and Louisa Elliot. She was first introduced in the second episode of Murder Drone's Heartbeat, where right off the start, James admittedly says that she heads off to the dump, takes the drones, customizes them with clothes, and even gives them hair alongside with it. Later on, we see Tessa bring in Sin into the same room as Butler and V and J. By the looks of it, Tessa saw that Sin was already turned on because Sin was part of that 0.01% of the drone group in the drone pile, where she self-rebooted from her core, and Tessa just took Sin because she didn't want the humans to dispose her again. The flashback of N's memory cuts off with Sin coming into the room. It was nice to get to see Tessa in that flashback, though I myself was very curious to know more about her when Heartbeat released. Throughout episode 3, The Promening, we get to see a huge surprise at the end. Spoiler alert, it's Tessa. She basically hopped out of the spaceship, killed a random worker drone with her sword, and out of the spaceship also comes out Jay. Which now looking back, it did seem weird for her out of all people to do that, especially since Tessa loves the worker drones. Then Tessa tells Jay that they have maintenance work to do. Usually, maintenance work in machinery means the actions taken to keep equipment, machinery, or a facility in good working condition and ensure its safety for use. Now, they didn't exactly say what kind of maintenance work they wanted to do, but if you go back all the way to the pilot episode and pause one of the scenes, you can see in end screen it's written that he needs a certified technician. Fever. If you look closely, very closely, you can actually see Tessa or Zanessa at the corner. I'm very happy I pointed this out when episode 4 actually released, because when episode 7 released, everyone's now pointing out how she was standing there in the corner, so I'm kinda happy I know way earlier. I also gave out a small 50-50 theory about it, so I'm proud of that too. I also want to thank everyone who made that video where I mentioned all that super popular by liking, sharing, subscribing, and etc. But not only was Nessa there, but also Doll, where you can actually see her spying on the characters twice. First part you can just see her glitching at the corner when Uzi's just doing her thing, and the second time you can actually see her eyes' reflection when Anne is looking at the TV. That was the answer to everyone's question about what happened to Doll and Tessa during the fourth episode, because they clearly had some major role back in the third episode. In episode 5, Home, she definitely took the role onto being a character from not much dialogue to a character who touched our hearts from her amazing personality and the energy she carries. Throughout all the episode 5 teaser pictures we've gotten, it mostly all had N throughout them, 
This portrayed the fact that he's going to be an important character for this episode. But if you ask me, in my personal opinion, I really thought Tessa carried the main character energy rather than Ed. She was the one who was willing to go against Sin one on one. She had this energetic personality which makes the viewer hooked into the episode, even if it means this episode turned out to be a fundamental failure. And even though this episode did have quite a bit of flaws in terms of the story, whenever Tessa was on screen, it's like she made me forget the fact there were a couple of flaws. That's the type of character which I appreciate so much. If a character can make you laugh even in the worst situations, or just hook the audience by preparing for a worthy battle, and not being sloppy when having proper dialogue, is one of the best characters throughout the story. And it honestly gets better if they have clear motives on top of all of that. What's the most pleasing upon all of this is that Tessa has all of these qualities. Liam, if you ever stumble upon this video, which I doubt, but if you do, thank you for making Tessa. You know what people sometimes say? Enjoy it while you have it. Throughout episode 6 of Murder Drone's Dead End, she also plays a somewhat decent role by engaging throughout the episode. She reunites with N, V, J, and even meets Uzi. It was nice to see her fun little hug she gave to N, like the last time N and Tessa were together back at the manor. Here in this episode, she executes her plan, which, according to her, was to burn down the cabin fever labs. Although her presence in this episode was very intriguing, many fans started to speculate her from here on out. Something that caught not just my attention, but from many others definitely was her slight reactions and responses to not just the circumstances she subjected to, but also her subtle dismissive feedback to her companions. Let me show you the clips. Jay, mind my ship. Of course, boss. Ew. Don't date my robot, please. He's his own person! You, ew! You're mean! Lucy! Help! Use your revolver! Ed! Watch it! Oh, no, no. It's okay, Uzi. I, I am so sorry. Enough, N. We'll save V after we finish here. Easy. Well, Sinessa, you can be quite a handful sometimes. I actually love the fact that Liam intentionally put out these tiny hints for us to actually distinguish the different demeanors that was put for Tessa as a character. Whether it means it's actually her, or just the skin which Sin clothed herself as. And again, going back to the third episode, we saw she killed a random worker drone. Let's just pretend episode 6 and 7 didn't release. I myself, in this scenario of seeing Tessa in episode 5, would have a complicated mindset about her personality, especially if episode 6 would release. It would maybe question if Tessa actually cared about the drones after the Gollum Massacre, but it would also lead me thinking that she grew tough after the Gollum Massacre because of how much she has been through. Like seeing both her parents die in front of her own eyes, and not to mention so many other people who came to the gala. Once more, I would love to mention the fact of how good Liam is into differentiating the characters personality-wise. At the beginning of episode 7, we were clearly able to tell that, oh, something's not right here with Tessa. She's much more dictatorial than she was throughout episode 6. Now let's head on to episode 7. Well, now, my friends, we're heading on to episode 7 of Murder Drone's Mass Destruction. And my god, this is where everything changes. To be honest, there's not really much to say, because most people watching this video have most likely, most probably, have watched episode 7. So, I'm gonna try to make this conversation a bit shorter. Long story short, Tessa's physical form is pretty dead. Like, she's not coming back, bro. She was skinned alive during the end of the Gollum Massacre by Sin. Basically, she got skinned alive by the drone she took care of. 
although it's shown that Sin despises humans, it's also important to know that she does have some sort of soft side to her. She can also become pretty clingy and obsessive. I mean, just take a look at Butler N and Sin's relationship. They're pretty close, and they foster a strong brotherly and sisterly bond. However, if N doesn't listen to Sin, she's literally willing to kill him, upload a backup, or just erase his memories. Despite that, for Tessa, it's a little bit different. Sin sees Tessa as a role model. Why? Well, Tessa was the first person to really care about Sin. She was the first person not to be afraid of her, and she was the one who came to the dumpster and to get Sin out there. Tessa was the first person to give Sin a home, a family, and just a bit of love alongside that compassion. Tessa truly does keep the love she has for Sin in her heart. She saw Sin in the dead drone pile, scared, hurt, and alone, just like her. Why else would Tessa give her the same hairstyle as well? She was probably thinking of herself when playing dress up with her. Sin also saw that too. Sin saw how badly Tessa was treated by her parents. She saw how Tessa really didn't have anyone except for the drones. Like Sin, who was put to disposal, she also has a bad relationship with the Elliots, just like Tessa. Seeing Sin and how much she looks like Tessa shows in her personality how Sin is obsessed with being more like Tessa. Sin didn't care about the Elliots except for Tessa, any more due to how bad she was also treated. She told Tessa she wouldn't dispose her, and she did exactly that. When she killed all of the humans at the mansion, she was true to her word about not discarding Tessa, as Tessa was turned into a skin suit. Therefore, she became more like Tessa. The worst part about all of this is that when Tessa died, she went through so much. Tessa was very young when she died, probably even my age in fact. Before she died, she didn't find anyone real enough, not even a proper humanly friend. For Tessa, before she died, the last thing she experienced with her parents was her getting scolded by them. Her parents didn't even say thank you when she tried to save them at the gala. Before she died, she wasn't even able to please them. She tries so hard to be good enough for them, and meanwhile, her own mother is not even willing to give her support. She went to the dump, and she took the drones out of there, so she can have the friends she never had. Instead of being treated with respect, or to be shown how to do something correctly, she was chained up by her own parents. If she made unethical decisions, her parents were either too harsh for her own good, or did not even care at all. Hell, something random I also want to point out is how irresponsible were Tessa's parents to legally leave a gun in a short stand where everyone can reach for it without any glass box shielding the weapon put in your very home. Miss Louisa, I think there's something called a safe, and most of all, leaving a gun laying around the house with a child is not an ethical decision. For Tessa, she has endured an immense amount of trauma and stress throughout the series, which may have significant implications for her mental health. Her experiences like facing constant danger from the solver, witnessing the death of loved ones, and navigating complex and interpersonal relationships amidst ongoing conflict. These experiences could contribute to symptoms commonly associated with mental health issues. Now, of course, I'm not saying she has or doesn't have mental health issues she's dealing with, and I'm not a mental health expert, so I'm not assuming or self-diagnosing her with PTSD, anxiety disorders, or survivor's guilt. I mainly just brought up the topic because I saw how much she's going through, and with all of that, I just really wanted to talk about her psychological well-being. Tessa's resilience in the face of these challenges could be evident, but the toll of her experiences on her emotional well-being is undeniable. As I mentioned, Tessa's life back on Earth with her parents also added layers of complexity and stress to her experiences. Growing up, she had to navigate a challenging family dynamic, particularly with her mother, Louisa Elliott. Everyone stand back! 
This is a citizen's murder. Oh, <gasps> that dress. You hold that gun less cool this instant, Missy. <gasps> who often displayed strict and harsh behavior towards her. Tessa was scolded and again chained up for her mild actions. When Tessa was interacting with the worker drones, she clearly felt anxious and uncomfortable when her mother dropped by. This draining relationship between mother to daughter likely contributed to feelings of inadequacy or that however hard Tessa would try to be good enough for her mother, she would just never see or appreciate it. The pressure Tessa had to go through shows the constant amount of high expectations she needs and has from everyone else around her. Now, despite all these challenges, Tessa displayed empathy and compassion as seen in her interactions with the worker drones and her desire to help and protect them. Her bond with the drones, especially Enn and Sin, highlighted her nurturing and caring nature, which contrasted with her mother's more rigid and controlling demeanor. Overall, Tessa on Earth was involved in a mix of strict family expectations, emotional stretches from her mother's harshness, and a deep-seated empathy for the drones she cared for. This background, combined with the immense responsibilities and dangers she faced in the battle against the Absolute Solver, paints a picture of a young woman who has endured significant emotional, psychological, and physical challenges throughout her life. Tessa was more than just a character. She was the first human throughout the series, a relatable person which many people can relate to. All the point of views and experiences were aligned to the drones. Although the drones are just as relatable to the viewers than Tessa, watching this right now, Tessa was the first person to not have extraordinary abilities, powers, or weapons, but rather just carry out a simple personality and a sweet childlike demeanor. Tessa was just a young adolescent trying to live her life. It was a shame to see her get wasted so early. Well, that's it guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on anything Murder Drones I have planned for you guys. Have an amazing day.